In this video, we will explore the functional and structural parts of the compound microscope. Once viewed, you may continue on with the next video describing how to set up your compound microscope for use. Please note, while the basic parts are common to all compound microscopes, their specific design and location may differ from what you see here. Be sure you can identify all of these parts on your own microscope before use. Beginning at the top, we have the two ocular lenses, also called the eyepieces, which you look through to see your slide. The left ocular has an adjustment ring near its base. This ring is used to help compensate for the differences in vision between your eyes. Between the base of the oculars is the interpupillary distance scale. It resembles a ruler because it measures the distance between the oculars. The scale will help you consistently set the distance between your oculars every week. To change the distance, simply move the oculars together or apart. The oculars and interpupillary distance scale are located on the top of the binocular tube. At the side may be a clamping screw. Loosening this allows the binocular tube to rotate. For the purposes of this lab, the clamping screw should be left tight. A loose binocular tube can damage the microscope or your sample. Below the binocular tube is the revolving nose piece and objective lenses. Most compound microscopes have three or four objectives, four times, 10 times, 40 times, and sometimes a 100 times lens that is only used for oil immersion. Together, the oculars and objective lenses magnify the specimen. Rotating the nose piece switches between objective lenses so that you can change the magnification. All of these parts are attached to the arm of the microscope, which runs from the binocular tube to the base of the microscope. Below the objective lenses is the mechanical stage. This is where your slides will be placed and secured by the spring-loaded slide holder. The slide holder is controlled by the mechanical stage controls, which are the small knobs attached directly to the right side of the stage. These controls will allow you to move the slide forward, back, and side to side. Directly below the stage are the condenser and iris diaphragm assembly. The condenser focuses the light directly onto your sample and is controlled by the condenser adjustment knob, located on the left of the stage and assembly. The iris diaphragm adjusts the amount of light that passes through your specimen and is used to increase the depth of field, which means that a thicker plane of your sample will be in focus. The opening of the iris diaphragm is controlled by the iris diaphragm adjustment lever, which is located on the front of your assembly. Sliding the lever completely to the left fully opens the iris diaphragm. Sliding the lever to the right will close the iris diaphragm. These parts may differ between models of compound microscope, so be sure you can identify them or their equivalent on your microscope. At the base of the arm are the coarse and fine focus adjustment knobs. These are on both sides of the arm. The coarse focus is larger and closest to the arm and the fine focus is smaller and is set in the center of the coarse focus. These knobs adjust the height of your stage, which allows you to focus on your specimen. As the name implies, the coarse focus is for large movements and should only be used when focusing using the four times objective. The fine focus makes smaller adjustments to the stage height and is used for focusing on your specimen when using 10 times and 40 times objectives. In the base of the microscope are the light source and the light intensity control. The control directly adjusts the brightness of your light source. Your head TA will tell you the appropriate level for your model of microscope. Finally, at either the front or side of the base is the power switch. This switch turns the light source on and off. Those are the basic parts of the compound microscope. If you cannot identify all of these on your own microscope, either watch this video again or ask a TA or instructor for assistance. 
you are now ready to continue on to the next video in this series, Use of the Compound Microscope.